tell me more about the today's event. So you, you said you, you'd like to teach students. So before you, 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 you didn't know, you didn't recognize you like. Well, I love teaching. I've, I mean, I also love performing. And I am a performer. And I do uh, performance art with digital paint. Just uh, the other week, I was in Toronto performing at the Nuit Blanche uh, Festival. It's an all-night arts festival, and I did digital painting projected on huge LED screens, uh, seven eight-foot by eight-foot screens spread over 100 feet of street. Um, so I love performance, as well as being a dancer. I like performing with dance as well, competitions and just, you know, having fun. So all of that actually feeds into the teaching. I love, um, I love helping people, and uh, it makes... Um, a huge difference for me to see what a difference it is when people just get a grip on the tools and express themselves. Um, and I, you know, my, my students range from professional artists, professional photographers, to people who've never ever drawn in their life. And I love it um, working with all levels of experience. And uh, for me, I think everybody can uh, derive so much joy from art, from making art, from doing art. And it's, it's not an exclusive preserve of artists or the few. I think everybody can enjoy uh, drawing and painting. And uh, you know whatever emerges from it, it's always something that can give satisfaction. So what do you, what do you really want to, do sh to share with the audience? What do you want to share with the audience? Well, the digital printing? when I'm teaching, uh, what I really want to share is, is an enthusiasm and an attitude and an approach of just go for it. Have fun, move forward, don't worry about things not being perfect, but just enjoy the process. And um, when, when people just go for it, Amazing things happen, and I see that happen every time I teach. So, uh, what's the name of this figure? Well, this painting is called Looking Down Deviz, and it's based on a scene when I went uh, to see the last race of the America's Cup here in San Francisco, and uh, we were just coming back. It was a beautiful day, look back down to Visadero, into the bay, and that was the view. So I thought, ah, I must paint that. And I had just seen the Diebenkorn, Richard Diebenkorn exhibit at the De Young Museum, and so I was inspired by the colors. And actually, this book, which is uh, from another exhibit that was in London called Masters of Color, you'll see similar colors. So I love the fauves. I love Matisse. I love Andre Durand and their, their work. Um, with uh, Fauvis colors. So all of that was in my mind when I painted this painting. Um, it is... Uh, a so at that moment, uh, do you use the, pen, the, the real, real pen to draw or do you use the digital? Well, this is done digitally using Corel Painter and a Wacom tablet. And uh, it's printed out on canvas. I was also inspired by going to the David Hockney exhibition at the De Young Museum because he had these beautiful, huge prints. So when I saw this image, uh, as I developed it, I thought, oh, I'd love to do a huge print. Um, so this is the maximum size I could do with the printer I have here in my studio. So what's the difference between uh, this one and the iPad uh, drawing? The difference in terms of tools that were used is that this was created on a Macintosh computer using a program called Corel Painter and a Wacom tablet. And when I work on the iPad, first of all, right at this moment, Painter doesn't exist on the iPad. There is a Painter mobile version on the Android, but not on the iPad. And so I'm using different apps. Like today when I was teaching, I used Sketch Club. Then also I'm not using a Wacom tablet I'm using an iPad with a variety of different styluses. So again, today I was using a pencil by 53. I didn't really enjoy that. So those are the differences in the tools. But once I've created an artwork on the iPad, if I want to, I can transfer it 
to my regular computer as a digital file, and if I wanted to, I could print it out like that. It would look different, but... So mm. there, there are a lot of tablets, so why you choose the iPad for it? Excellent question. And actually, I uh, had an email just very recently that um, asked the same question. They said, why on your website do you talk about iPad painting when there's many other you know, equally good or better platforms, devices, etc.? And I think it's a very fair question. So, and I think it's important. The answer is important because um, the iPad isn't the only mobile device out there, of course not. There are many great mobile solutions, and I use a lot of different mobile solutions. I work with a Windows Surface Pro, and I love Fresh Paint. I love using Painter on it. It's great, it's a Windows system. I use the Wacom Cintiq Companion, which is also a Windows system. Again, Fresh Paint, love it. Painter, love it. These are both mobile solutions as well. Um, I haven't uh, got so much experience on the Android platform yet, but I will do. I want to explore that more. But having said all of that, why iPad? There's one simple answer, and that is David Hockney. When I walked into the David Hockney show at the Royal Academy a couple of years back in London, and I just saw these huge prints done from his iPad drawings, and saw the replays of his iPad drawings on screens, I said, that's it. It's there. You know, it's here. Digital painting has really arrived. I mean, it had already arrived. But it, you know, in the, one of the most uh, classical conservative establishments uh, in London, you know, the Royal Academy, um, there you had these digital prints done on the iPad. Beautiful. So I immediately went and bought an iPad and said, okay, that's it. Have to go, f have to explore this. And that's why I sort of went for the iPad. Also, um, I do enjoy the iPad. It's a very, uh, you know, I've been a Mac person, you know, since I started using the computer. I do use Windows and, uh, you know, Windows is, is great, but I am definitely more of a Mac person in terms of the intuitive flow of things, and I really enjoy the iPad. So that's, that's why, uh, you know, I'm teaching that, because I use it as an artist. I actually, you know, perform with the iPad, I sketch with it. Some of the apps I use, like Sketch Club, don't exist right now on other platforms. They only exist on the iOS platform. You know, and there's other apps that only exist on Android and only exist on Windows uh, or, you know, other platforms. So. Um, that's, you know, the long-winded answer to why iPad. So from the past time until now, so do you think your background, I mean the physics background to help you grow in your business or your painting business? Well, my... Do they have a relationship? There is a relationship. And, uh, you know, I've often thought about this. Um, training in physics is really a training in problem solving. So physics is taking phenomena in the natural world and looking at a structure and a framework which attempts to explain it, creates a metaphor for it in mathematical terms, can make predictions that you can verify. That's what physics is doing all the time. It's problem solving, taking complexity and bringing it down to simplicity. And then uh, from sim simple foundations, making complex predictions. So what I do as an artist is, is very interesting because what what, what's happening in drawing or painting, especially from observation, direct observation, which I love to do most, is that if I look at you, for instance, and do a portrait of you, what I'm seeing is very complex. I'm, there's a huge amount of data that is there in front of me. I mean, there's you, there's the way the light's reflecting and uh, the shadows and light and the colors. And then there's everything around you and the variation again of tone, color, et cetera, et cetera. When I translate that into a, a painting or a drawing, I am having to abstract from what I see an essence and a sim simplicity, a foundation, a framework. That's exactly what physics is. You look at a complex world, the world we exist in, you have an enormous amount of data, 
And then you do something with it, which is you create a simple framework from which to explain it. That is what I do as an artist. So yes, there's a huge amount of common linkage between the two. Also, um, it really influences the way I teach. Because um, as a teacher, um, I'm, I really believe in uh, building things up very methodically. And so, for instance, this morning in my iPad class, I don't dive right in. Oh, do you want me to pause? Okay. <laughs> do you want me to pause, or shall I continue? That's it. That's okay. It's lucky you've got two cameras, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So for instance, this morning in my iPad class, I started with the big picture. So rather than to dive into details, I always start with, let's look at the context. Why are we doing this? What's the big picture? What's mobile painting all about? So we looked at the uh, Surface Pro, the Wacom Cintiq. We looked at other apps other than the one we were learning as a main app. So that's very much influenced by the way I uh, have, have taught and studied in physics. Um, and then I'm very methodical in my step-by-steps. Um, I think one of the complaints one hears generally about training, whether it's online or not, is that people go through steps and they skip a step here or they skip a step there and it's difficult to follow. Um, whereas w one of the things I'm very meticulous about is that when I explain any process step-by-step, um, I really, I, I don't miss a step. I really am very meticulous about making sure that everything, even simple things that one may make assumptions about is explained explicitly. So from your, your experience, uh, you, you, you seem to combine the two, two fields. So what's the field you like most now? Oh, well, I'm definitely loving art. Um, I still have an interest in science, but I'm doing what I love. Mm. So, and at that time, so do you think uh, it's the, uh, I think it's not hard transition, right? Because you love art. So, I think, I think we are done, right? Um, do, do, do you guys have some interesting questions? Yeah, I think, do you, how do you, how do you think is the future about this industry? Can like you use everything digital thing? Yeah. yeah. Ah, the industry being art in the industry of making fine art, or is that what no, you mean? Uh, um, we, we mean, so what's your uh, future plan? And uh, how do you think the... Uh, or about you, yeah. Yeah. What's your goal about the digital thing? Oh, for me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, first of all, I'm, I'm a natural inquisitive person. That is who I am. I'm inquisitive. I'm always asking questions and always looking around, always wanting to experiment and always wanting to try things out. That's who I am. So in recent years, I've been involved, for instance, in Leap Motion, which is a gesture-based uh, system. And I connected Corel and Leap Motion. They created some prototypes, which I could paint with using motion of my hands detected by this motion detector. And so it was really fun exploring that. And I'm still exploring that field. Um, and that's just an example of how, I'm, when there's tools and technology, I just want to see what we can do with them. And so the future is all about exploration for me. It's about, you know, it's exciting because things are happening so quick in terms of the uh, mobilization of all devices, how everything's getting more compact and easier to uh, walk around with. So that's why I'm loving working with you know things like the iPad. Um, I'm still very interested in the gesture-based painting, especially as a performer. I want to be able to dance. I'm a dancer. I want to be able to dance and paint all at the same time. And I'm starting to be able to do that, working with some other technologies. So for me, that's, you know, my future is always about exploring. It's not about standing still or just doing the same things again and again. Also, I get bored, so, you know, real easy. I need to have a lot of stimulation. So I, I never want to keep doing the same things again and again. I want to prod and, you know, poke around and see what can I do that's different. And I challenge myself even in my paintings. You know, if I get in a habit or a rut, 
you know, I keep using the same brushes or something. Sometimes I purposely just throw a wrench in the system and I force myself to use stuff I don't normally use because I just want to see what happens. And it make, keeps life uh, fun, keeps me on my toes. How do you learn that uh, softwares, apps, you learn, you just learn it by yourself? Ah, oh, excellent question. I love all your questions. So for me, I've always learned by doing and by exploring and by trying out, um, just fearlessly. I just dive in. So to be honest, I'm not a great student. Um, just as, uh, the same with dance. I'm a dancer by doing. I dance. I, I see things. I make. I take my dance from everywhere. I'm a swing dancer. I love Lindy Hop. But I throw in everything into it: tango, salsa. You, and nothing's sacred. I just throw it all in, mix it up, and improvise in the moment. It's exactly the same with painting, digital painting. So everything I've learned, pretty much, I just dive in. I, I start using it. And then I try everything. And I prod and you know, pry. And of course, teaching is also a great um, avenue for learning, always. So as a teacher, I'm forced to have a much deeper level of understanding because I've got to be able to explain things. That means I really have to understand them and I have to know them very deeply. Um, so I immerse myself in stuff, immerse myself. But that's how I learn apps and software is I just immerse myself in it and um, you know, it's ironic because I, you know, I am a professional instructor amongst my many hats I wear. You know, I'm a performer, I'm an artist, I'm an instructor. So I am a professional instructor, but, um, but I'm not very good at um, just sitting in a class. I, I want to just dive in and do. OK, so I got a question. So uh, because before you use the pen or brush to do the real, uh, real painting on the canvas, mm -hmm. can you tell me that transition from the traditional to the digital? Yeah. So, uh, well, it actually, most of what I did before I did digital was drawing. And I loved pastel drawing uh, with, with Caran d'Ache, which are water-soluble uh, pastels. And um, so I was really a drawer more than a painter. Drawing has always been the core of everything I do. And I still do lo life drawing. I still love drawing. Um, so what happened was... I was sketching at a party, and I'm going to answer your question. I'll get back to that. I was sketching at a party in 1991 in uh, Woodside, California, Silicon Valley. Someone saw me sketch, and they said, wow, that looks good. You should meet a friend of ours who makes painting software. So I said, sure. I have no idea what they were talking about. So I was introduced to Claire Barry, Supermac, um, user interface designer for Pixel Paint Pro software. and. She sat me down at a Macintosh computer, put a Wacom tablet in my lap, and I did my first, you know, real portrait on the computer. Fell in love with it. What was in